Okay, so day one, demo of your existing tub surround. Number one, you have to shut off the water to the actual house. You don't wanna be sawzalling or doing anything by removing this and causing more work than necessary. So be sure that your family or whoever lives in the home knows that it's gonna to have to be off for a couple hours while you do this demo. And I'm gonna show you how to kind of surgically do this so that you're not making more work for yourself. Because a lot of situations, that's all you're trying to do is just replace the actual tub and not having to remodel the entire bathroom. So number one, shut off that water. Number two, we'll get into the demo. Okay, so find your water shut off. Usually there's a meter and there's usually there's a shut off before it or after it. Doesn't really matter which one, which one ever, you know, actually shuts off, but make sure you just shut that water off at the meter. I would recommend finding the, the sink or something down in the basement so you can just let all the water out so no water comes out of these valves because everything's going to be pressurized unless you turn on the water somewhere. So you want to make sure it shuts off because if it doesn't completely shut off, then there might be a problem with the actual valve. First thing we're going to do is just remove our shower faucet. So depending on how this is arranged, you should be able to just that's really on there. Let's have some channel locks. Okay, so obviously some of this is pretty easy. Just unscrew the the handle and then your discussion plate. Sometimes these have little Allen keys on there that you gotta remove. So we'll grab one of those. So this one's just a 532nd, but this just tightens itself onto the copper pipe. And then it'll slip right off. And you also wanna take away your drain assembly. So this is your overflow. And we'll just disconnect the piping here. Okay, so our pop-up drain, this is just a standard tub tool drain. So you just have to unscrew your pop-up and then you can just put this on the crosshairs. Sometimes they don't fit, so that's why they have the little fork. Okay. Okay, so as far as cutting out the drywall, first you have to know that all the most of almost every single fiberglass unit has some kind of flange that extends about an inch perimeter around the edge so you have to make sure that you're cutting beyond that flange so you can pull this out now the other thing is this is a solid one piece tub so they didn't even put this in here until they actually built the home they put this in and then they did everything else around it so you most of the time you can't get this out in one piece and you're gonna to have to cut it into pieces so as far as evaluating the drywall or where to cut to it really depends on your tile layout and where you want to go to obviously this is a little bit of a unique situation with this kind of partition wall that doesn't go all the way to the ceiling so we are just planning to go about 84 inches for my waterproofing and Really what I plan to do is move my shower head up another three inches, just because most of the time, the old standard was 78 inches for your shower head. And that just isn't high enough anymore, especially with the rain shower heads. Most people, um, it's just not tall enough. So I'm gonna make the shower head 82 inches and I'm just gonna bring that waterproofing up a couple inches above my shower head. So, but really anything from, you know, the shower head up doesn't necessarily need to be waterproofed, but it is a good idea to at least go a couple inches above. So we're gonna cut our drywall out at 84 inches. And one thing I really wanna keep an eye on is this outside corner, so I don't have to do a whole bunch of additional work. So I wanna stay away from the edge where my corner bead is, because if you hit that, you end up kind of cracking some of this off. So I'm gonna stay inside of one inch, and my shower pan is gonna be um, 32 inches. So really, once I cut this out, I'll probably just come out, you know, about 33 inches on this one, about two inches away from the edge of my outside wall. I always recommend having the towel work 
coming outside of the shower base and going down along the edge of that because it's a real common area for water damage. We'll show you that when we get into the waterproofing, but you know, when you're cutting this out, just be sure you're going outside of that flange, most important part. So we've got 84 inches for our cut line. And we're gonna go ahead and use an oscillating tool. Um, you can use a sawzall for that, but this is gonna be more precise. It's gonna be a little bit safer. I don't foresee really any wires necessarily behind in this situation, but you have to be careful because a lot of times electricians will just run wires behind the tub surround. So there could be loose wires back there. It also, if you're on like on the first story, there could be water lines going feeding up the second story. So you don't want to just dive in and cut too deeply into your stud bay. You kind of want to be delicate so until you get that drywall out of here so you know what's going on. But we'll go ahead and um, mark this on the wall because it's all about precision at this point. Demo is pretty precise when it comes to just wanting to do the walk-in shower. When it's like a newer full remodel, it doesn't really matter. You're gonna you're gonna be pre drywall and everything, but I'm not doing that in this particular situation. So make sure you put some plumb lines, you know, on your wall so that you could cut this nicely and not have to do more work than you have to. So we'll do that same thing over here. That's basically where, you know, so my, my tile work will overlap that little bit of drywall there and it'll be all waterproof. Okay, so we're gonna take this trim off because I don't want to, I wanna be, you know, I'm gonna have to recut this trim after I get the tile up. So just be delicate with it. If you're trying to save the trim, you don't wanna have to match or stain a new piece. Set, set that aside. And same thing on this side. We'll get more accurate once we get the towel layer down. So I'm not worried about pulling that out. That'll pull out when I pull out the wall. So, but you can see the flange comes up around the perimeter of this. So that's what you're trying to overcome. And you can see here, I do have a vent pipe here. So that's one of the reasons you don't want to just take a sawzall and just deep dive into that for any reason. Okay, so for cutting this, that's where you are going to use the sawzall now. Again, when you're cutting this, try not to deep dive too far in. But I, you know, I already kind of know where my pipes are. I have a vent pipe here. I got my copper line here, but I have the water shut off, so I'm not overly concerned. It still doesn't mean there isn't wires behind there. It still could be a possibility somebody fished something behind there. So again, try to, I get a nine inch blade usually and just try to not go fully into that wall cavity. But to cut this, there's really no other way than to cut it into like four pieces and get the whole thing out of here. So we'll go ahead and cut this. And again, just try to be as safe as possible and not allow that to go in too far. Fiberglass is pretty nasty stuff, so make sure you wear gloves for this. And at this point, you can basically just pull this out.
Okay, so all in all, not too bad. Didn't really have any wires behind her, which is a good thing. So we'll get these walls out of here and then we'll get the tub out. Okay, so it depends on how much you want to lift and do. In this instance, I think I'm just going to cut the tub in half, make it a little bit easier on myself. You know, the fiberglass comes out pretty easy. So let me just do that. That's kind of annoying. Got that copper in a goofy spot. Always unexpected ways about doing things. This is goofy. Just having the copper going on above the floor. So in the new shower pan, that's not going to work. We have to refinagle some of this stuff. And we obviously have to put a new new drain assembly, anyways. But yeah, that's kind of a Mickey Mouse way of doing this. I'm not sure why they went that route. So I really always love demoing bathrooms like this with the tubs and showers that are fiberglass. It really makes for a simple removal. So not all of them are going to be this way. If you have existing tile and cement board, definitely going to take you a little bit more time to do. But really, I just want to emphasize that demo is really a precise method if you want to be able to just do just a specific part of your project so if you're just doing the tub and shower demo is definitely going to uh, be something you want to just take your time and be delicate at doing so that you don't have a lot of additional work but i put this into a course a three-day tile shower course that i call it because i did it in three days and basically i outline the entire process step by step it's really important to plan ahead for a project like this. Uh, running to Home Depot back and forth is definitely gonna hog up a lot of time and take draw this project out. So I put this into a curriculum that goes step by step through the whole process. And if you watch this, I assure you, you will be able to save a lot of time and money in doing something like this. I don't really have a high cost on this. I just wanna get this information out to you to help you do your own bathroom remodeling project. So thanks so much. Give me a like on this video if you would, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.